This is Scott with Cochran Tech Services. This video is all about certificate management, root certificate authorities, server certificates, client certificates, and why we get these crazy, hey man, watch out, someone's trying to steal your credit card. <laughs> so what's happening is anytime we want to use secure communications or TLS communications, these two hosts, these two computers exchange certificates. If say my supervisor gets a certificate from the Jace and it doesn't trust it and it's not signed by somebody that's trust or signed by the root CA, then we're going to get the bouncy castle error. We get the, Hey man, watch out. Someone's trying to steal your information. So if we leverage this root CA and the root CA signs my Jace's certificate, and the root CA is trusted by my supervisor, we don't have those types of errors. So we can take this root CA and import it into our Windows OS, and that'll solve the Chromium issues with Chrome and Edge. And we can also take our root CA and import that into our Mozilla Firefox certificate store. That would solve Mozilla's issue. So the web browser matters. The operating system matters. Also, What's going to be important is how we sign things and what their names are. So first, I'm going to create a root CA in my Vicon branded workplace for N4.13. I'm at the tools in my menu bar, and I'm going to go down to my AX certificate management. Here in my user key store, I'm going to click the new button, and I'm going to make this root CA. I'm going to call this root CA root CA. I'm creative. Very creative. I'm going to set up an organization, maybe Cochrane Tech Services. Country code is US, and typically we'd have all this information filled out. This is a, a quick and dirty video to get you guys moving. At a minimum, I want 2048 bits for a key size. And this is going to be a CA, or Certificate Authority, that can sign other certificates. I want a digital signature for usage as well as non repudiation. I'll click OK. And I'm going to define a private key password. The root CA is done. The root CA can already begin signing other things. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go to the platform of my supervisor and go to its certificate management. In here, I'm going to log into the user key store again. By default, we're using the default or the Tritium certificates, and we're going to go change in that. I'm going to make a new certificate. I'm going to name it the local host certificate. This will be a server type certificate. Call it local host. Organization is CTS again. It's from the US. Maybe I make this good for two years. Fine. 2048 bits for a key size. Server certificate. Non repudiation. Click OK. Set up a password. Might take a while. Yeah, okay, sure. So once that local host certificate is created, I want to sign it with my root CA that I made before. So I'm going to left click this local host and left click cert request. Hey, you're missing the locality and state. It's okay, it's a demonstration. I'm going to punch in that private key password I just made for it. And I'm going to create this certificate sign request file. Now, if this wasn't for my local host, maybe it was for a JACE with a domain name service or with some other host name, that .csr file, that certificate sign request, is what I could have GoDaddy or DigiCert or Amazon go sign. If I had them sign it, I wouldn't have to do it myself. All right, so there's a certificate sign request file. I can go to Tools again and go to the Certificate Signer tool. And I'm going to sign that local host server certificate with my root CA. Click on my folders. I'm going to sign local host. I'm going to punch in the CA's password. All right. That's that signed certificate. Click Save. Now what I'm going to do is import that from my computer into the cert manager for local host. Import. Import local host. Now it's going to overwrite what I already have, and that's fine. We're going to see my yellow shield turn green. Boop. Yeah, I know. We're going to overwrite it. That's fine. 
Ta-da! Now it's signed. That's awesome. A couple other things, though. The platform of my supervisor doesn't trust the root CA. Well, let's import that root CA. Import. I have to export that root CA first from my AX certificate management. So here, I take my root CA that's on my computer and to export this so I can use it elsewhere. I'd never recommend exporting the private key. What's going to happen is you're going to compromise your ability to stay confidential. So I'll export that root CA so I can use it other places. Okay. Go to the certificate management of my platform to the user trust store and import it here. Ha ha, there he is. <laughs> oh, that wasn't the sound I wanted. This was. All right, so that was good. That's a good thing. I'm going to import that. Now, this platform will trust any other host that has a certificate signed by that root CA. All right, so this thing has a local host signed by the root CA. I'm going to really quickly go import that certificate to my Mozilla Firefox browser, and we're going to see that we no longer have this super scary potential security issue. All right, I've got that signed, but I'm not done. I need to make sure I'm using the correct certificate here in my web service. In my web service here, I'm going to expand my main HTTPS cert. And instead of using the Tritium, I'm going to use the local host. I'm going to punch in that private key password, click Save. We'll see that that health now says OK. And now we should be able to log in through the browser. Ta-da! All I had to do was refresh the page, and I didn't have to worry about that certificate issue. Now, if we were to take this root CA and import it into our Windows operating system and its certificate store, that would solve the issue here as well in Chromium. And Chromium is the type of browser that Edge and Chrome are. So I realized that that was quick, down, dirty, super fast. I like leveraging Mozilla Firefox because I can control its certificate store. Because I can control it, it's inherently less secure than that of Microsoft Edge. Chrome, and even your Windows operating system. So proceed with caution. There are a lot of things to consider in this. This video is a quick down and dirty, how to make a root CA, how to make a certificate, whether it's a client or server, the same way, just the radio button is different. How to sign that certificate. And we know that whatever signs our host certificates, we can import to Windows, we can import to other services, like Mozilla Firefox, we can leverage what we can control there. Now, if you have an IT department that manages your certificate store on your Windows computer, all you should need to do is provide them that root CA, and you should be good to go. So I hope you guys learned something. I hope this makes a little bit more sense. Best of luck, and have a great day. Oh, I get it!